Oh, uh, that's not where my mind had gone. <laughs> yes. <laughs> How they like to eat remote buttons. Oh, my goodness. Oh, okay. Time to start. Yes. On that note. <laughs> on that note, welcome to the 4 p.m. Eastern Time presentation of Series, Serials, Pieces, and Parts for the first full day of the Evergreen International Conference. I am Jennifer Weston, moderator for the day, and I am very happy to once again thank our conference sponsors. Our champion level sponsors are ECDI, which is the Evergreen Community Development Initiative. They are here as a champion sponsor of closed captioning. Equinox Open Library Initiative is the champion sponsor of the Feedloop platform. And Kipu is here as the champion sponsor of Hackfest, again, which will be held on Thursday, free of charge. Please join us. And I will be monitoring the chat both in Zoom and in Feedloop to make sure that any of these questions are rise up to the level that our presenters will see them. And at this time, I am just going to introduce Elizabeth Thompson from Noble and Carol Witt from CW Mars. And Carol, if you're ready, I am going to make you a presenter. Okay. Actually, I'm going to make you a host, I guess. Let's do that. All right. This will stop the other's screen sharing. Do you want to continue? Yes. <laughs> yes, I could guess I should stop. There you go. Back. Okay. So, hello, I'm uh, Carol Witt from CW Mars. I'm the Bibliographic Services Supervisor, and Elizabeth Thompson of Noble will be uh, talking after me. And basically, we're two consortia who do some things the same when it comes to series and parts and that kind of thing. And sometimes we do things that are very different, but, uh, you know, to each their own. There's no right or wrong. You do what's best for you, your consortia, your libraries, your patrons. So to start, uh, for cataloging at CW Mars, we do have uh, the bibliographic uh, services, which is commonly called the CAT Center. And so we do have uh, centralized cataloging for uh, most items. There are exceptions, but we'll get into that. So we do have certain policies that are set up. We draft them uh, in consultation with our bibliographic committee members, as well as other libraries when necessary, reviewed by our the CW Mars executive committee, and then they get approved by the users council. So those are the you know top level uh, policies. For procedures and standards, they tend to be more decided internally at CW Mars by the staff, but also in consultation with you know bibliographic committee and libraries and others as appropriate. If it's something that you know the CAT Center itself does, then we tend to uh, more announce a change that is going to be happening to let libraries know. But uh, you know, if it's something that's going to affect all the libraries, we don't want to do just a top down, you know, this is what we're doing. And that wouldn't go over very well for our 160 plus libraries. Um, so, as I mentioned, CW Myers provides centralized cataloging for all print and non-print items that are sold or distributed through vendors, including self-published material. Uh, exceptions are things like equipment. So, you know, if you're lending laptops or that kind of thing, uh, games, toys, locally created kits. So those are the ones that the libraries are creating internally rather than something, a, a kit they buy off the shelf. Uh, library of things collections, uh, sometimes local history, depending on what it is. Uh, we do have shared museum pass uh, records, but they're very basic. So except for parts, 
libraries decide how to catalog their item records. So that includes shelving locations, prefixes, suffixes, call numbers, etc. But CW Mars does require the use of standardized parts when they are appropriate to use. So for serials, we do have a, a serial records policy, and that policy is to use serial bibliographic records for magazines, periodicals, journals, plus print publications that are issued on a regular basis where the content is revised or updated, but is generally the same. So examples are almanacs, directories, travel guides, yearbooks. Um, and this also includes uh, large reference sets that uh, are updated periodically and produced indefinitely, such as the 20th century literary criticism, which I haven't checked, but that might now be 21st century literary criticism. Um, and these records all use or should use standardized parts. And an exception to that is annual publications of anthologies. So that is your, you know, best plays of 2023 or, you know, best SF short stories of 2022. So for series, uh, we use monograph bibliographic records for individual titles with a series entry in the 490 field and sometimes when they're available, the appropriate 800 so 8xx field, depending on whether it's you know, author or the, just the title, series title. So this does include those annual publications of anthologies where the content changes for each edition, such as anthologies of best plays or writings, so that we can have a contents field, the 505, uh, specific to each volume. So that way, you know, the titles are searchable and uh, are included for better access for anyone looking for a particular title or sometimes an author. And in this case, these records would not use standardized parts. And then there are comics, manga, graphic novels, that kind of thing. Uh, so originally, the idea was to treat them as serial, serial titles and catalog them on serial records. And so those would have parts. However, some libraries patrons preferred to see the cover images of each new volume so that they could uh, choose which one because they could tell by the cover rather than, you know, oh, I can't remember whether it's, I've read volume 13, uh, but they can recognize the cover. So that would help them to uh, find which volume it was they want to place the hold on or to find it on the shelf. And then some other libraries patrons preferred to go to just one record and see all of the volumes in one place rather than hunt around for each volume in the uh, catalog. So our catalog is a bit of both. We do have series records for those uh, so they're open records and then we have individual records for each individual graphic novel volume so they coexist and we do ask that libraries should be consistent about which type they use just so that it uh, reduces confusion for their patrons they don't want to sometimes see individual volumes and sometimes see just one record with a whole bunch of volumes. So if you're using a serial record or open record, you use a part. And if you're using an individual volume records, you do not use a part. And yes, this does cause a lot of chaos. So this was something that we've just updated on our site to say, 
what kind of records should have parts and what kind of records should not have parts uh, to try and make it clearer for our library staff. And again, serial records, the annual, biennial, legal, education, travel, exam, test prep, periodicals and magazines, graphic novels, records for a series, uh, the audiovisual disc sets that do not circulate as a full set or multi-volume uh, print volumes not circulating as the full set. So those should have parts. The kind of records that should not have parts are you know, a standard monograph record for a single title or volume, uh, bib records for the individual volume of a graphic novel, audiovisual disc sets circulating as the full set, and multi-volume sets circulating as the full set. So on top of this, libraries must use the CWMR's standardized parts in the parts fields of their holdings records when they're, it's appropriate to use them. And we do say that you know, if you want to use a variation, then you can put that at the end of their call number or as a suffix. Um, so, you know, again, they can uh, create call numbers to show however they wish, but for the parts, because it affects how patrons can place a hold, we need to use those standardized parts. And, you know, if you're unsure about whether or not to use parts or how to format them properly, you should check with the CAT Center. So here are just some example standards that we have for our parts. So for serials and multi-volume print records, uh, for annual publications, we just want the year. That's it. Uh, if it's annual publications with multiple volumes, then it's the year, a space of V, lowercase v, period, and then the number. And then annual publications with multiple volumes and parts, again, year, space, lowercase v, period, number, space, lowercase pt, period, number. Uh, biennial publications are covering a range of years. It's the the first year and the last year with the uh, hyphen in between. Uh, volumes of a set is simple, lowercase v, period, number. And then if you need to add a part, because it's you know part one, part two of each volume, then you would have the v period, lowercase v, period, number, space, lowercase pt, period, number or NO period or supplement. So it, it varies. And then standalone supplements would be the SUPPL period number. And we also provide you know, actual examples of what that should look like on our uh, page with all of the documentation. So then periodicals for monthly, we just want the first three letters of the month in capital letters, space, and then the year. Or, you know, if it's uh, two months, so June, July 2024, you would have the capital J-U-N hyphen, capital J-U-L space, and the year. And then if it's a December, January issue, you would put the capital DEC space 2023 hyphen capital JAN space year. And weekly, again, it's the first three letters of the month in capitals, space, the number, and year. Uh, for seasonal, it's just the whatever the full season is, so it would be autumn, or no, I guess we use fall, bad choice. Uh, spring, we'll say spring, it would be S-P-R 
or I-N-G, not S-P-R. Uh, and then spring, summer. And uh, special issues would be special issue plus then whatever date format would be appropriate and individual comic issues. So that is not the graphic novel. That is the actual issue that comes out weekly or monthly or whatever would be lowercase v period number space uh, lowercase no period number. And then we have uh, audio visual disc sets. And this one's actually a bit interesting because it's something we just changed. Uh, at, for years, apparently we've had it so that instead of having one standard for disc with all caps, you could either put all caps D-I-S-C or you could have capital D lowercase I-S-C. So we actually just said, why are we still doing this? And so we changed that a month or two ago. Um, and then of course we had a complaint, or not a complaint, but uh, uh, one library asking, oh, well, if it's multiple disks, can't we just put D-I-S-C-S? -S? It's like, you know, the parts are so, uh, complicated already. We don't want to start adding on even more complications. So we said, just keep it as disk. So you would have, you know, disk and then either the number or else the number, no uh, hyphen number for multi disks. And for multi CD sets, it's the same as above, except you use CD instead of disk. Uh, sets with multiple formats. We've got those uh, DVD, Blu-ray, 4K Ultra HD, which I think we just added as well because we didn't have anything for that. And then uh, multi-part sets with unnumbered discs uh, can vary. That's quite often with, I guess, TV series. So if the discs have uh, our episodes that you would watch in order, you would put the disc and then figure out the number and then include the episode title so it's uh, recognizable. And then if it's episodes that have multiple discs, so it's long enough that it's like a two DVD set for one episode, then you would uh, if you're circulating them together, it would just be the episode title. And if you're circulating, you know, that episode in uh, separately, you would have episode title, colon, space, disc, and then the number. So that would be one or two. Unfortunately, despite documentation and training, we still get parts like this. So for the first one, you might be able to see that uh, there was an April 24th through May 24th, or May 1st, 2023 issue of a magazine. And yet we have five different parts created for that. Some of them ignoring the May 1st, some not including May and in just the one. Uh, this was a very simple label for a, I can't remember whether it was a disc or, you know, or volume, I guess it was a volume. Uh, but yes, so somebody's just put a two, somebody's put capital V period two, and somebody put lowercase v period two. And then for the last column, it's a uh, TV series set. And they have put one and two, capital S point one, capital S point two, or season one in all caps, season one and two, which is fine if you're circulating those together, except that it shouldn't be season. <laughs> and then you have your lowercase s. So we have uh, many different variations in there. So some of the things we're trying to do to improve parts problems, uh, one of my staff, Amy, who I believe is here, uh, 
created a, a dedicated parts training and offered it in September 2023. And I should say our basic cataloging training session is two hours. This uh, parts training itself was one and a half hours almost. And uh, the, the recording was loaded to the staff site. We are in the midst of updating all of our documentation on the staff site and uh, parts was one of the first things we did, if not the first, because it's so important. Uh, we do use responses to any library questions in the CAT Center's weekly helpful hints, emails, and blog posts. And so when parts questions comes up or uh, something we notice come up, we will include that. Uh, Amy, again, also recently developed a do you know your parts quiz to uh, test libraries' knowledge, library staff's knowledge on what parts are appropriate and not. Uh, one of our uh, other staff, not in the CAT Center, but in library applications, created a document based on his reports and it lists a bunch of parts that need correcting. And there are about 46,000 records with parts on them that you know, some of them we don't actually need to do anything with, but for the most part, we're actually deleting or merging or editing the parts. And we're also tracking the libraries who are commonly adding the unnecessary or incorrect parts or not adding parts so that uh, we can contact them and uh, provide further training to help them improve. And then we're also in the process of developing parts certification for particular library staff to edit, merge, or delete incorrect parts on shared bibliographic records. And the first part of that certification is that they will have to do the parts training and uh, the quiz and get a very good score on the quiz. So that is uh, the end of my section and uh, Carol, maybe I'll let you just I'll, I'll just uh, tell you when to uh, okay. go next. All right. So okay, so go back it. one. I yeah. think. I'll, let me get back to the view. Uh, so um, I'm Elizabeth Thompson. I'm the member services manager at Noble. Um, we're a much smaller uh, consortium than than uh, CW Mars. We have 25 libraries, public and academic. Um, and in Noble, as as is true in, in CW Mars, um, bi bibliographic decisions are made at the Noble level, the consortium level. So we decide, um, and in in cooperation with one of our uh, working groups who, who uh, looks at things, um, uh, we decide about bibliographic records, what kind of record it is, and, and so on. Um, and our guidelines determine how we represent monographs, serials, series, sets, et cetera, in the catalog, whether we use a single record for the whole run of a serial or an individual uh, record for each edition. Uh, those are determined by us um, according to our guidelines. Um, but like in CW Mars, our libraries decide how they're going to handle um, the items. So um, they can use shelving locations, prefixes, suffixes, call numbers. We don't take any, um, I don't want to say interest, <laughs> we don't take any involvement in, in those kinds of decisions. And parts, um, whether to use a part or not use a part, which is really, um, we'll, we'll, we'll come to some examples where some libraries use parts and some don't. Um, but we do, um, we've done less work and have less documentation and and so on on what what uh what those parts should look like but they should be using standardized uh, part notations um 
listening to Carol, it, it, it occurs to me, and I, I've got notes on this somewhere, and it would have been, this would have been a great place to have them. Um, it's too easy to make mistakes with parts. It's too easy to add a new part, not realizing that there are already a set of parts on that record. Um, and, you know, one of the things we should do is, is look at ways to make it harder to make mistakes and easier to see that you probably want to attach to the to the part that's uh, already on the on the record. Parts fall in that weird place where they look like they're an item thing, but they're really a bib record thing. And, and I think that's where a lot of the confusion um, comes in. And next. So, it, you know, we're talking about serials and, and monograph uh, cataloging here. So in serials cataloging, there's only one bibliographic record and it stays in the system while various editions may come and go. And in monograph cataloging, each edition gets its own separate record. Next. Um, and we draw the line between those in, in mostly similar to CW Mars, but we make some differences um, in Noble. Um, there anything that we consider to be a continuing series, um, like school year books, annals of the whatever society, city directories, annual reports, uh, those kinds of things uh, that come out regularly are serials and they're often reference works. And that and for those, we treat them as a serial and a new volume is added to a continuing record um, because these are not updated replacement copies. They're a record of what happened that year. Um, and so it is um, likely that libraries are building long uninterrupted um, uh, collections of these rather than tossing the old school yearbook because the new one is out or the same with the city directory. So those are always serials in Noble. And with which of course means they necessitate parts. Next. And here's an example. This is the Marblehead High School yearbook. And, and you see that they have parts over there and the parts represent the year. And that's how we do them. Next. Now, things that we catalog as, as uh, monographs. In Noble, anything that uh, comes out annually or on a regular basis or an irregular basis, but where the new edition is intended to replace the outdated older edition, we treat as monographs. Um, so they have, uh, so that they'll have correct information and cover images for each edition. And so that we have um, the individual publication dates to use for searching, sorting and reports. So that includes the travel guides, the college guides, the marketplace guides, anything like that, um, where it's expected to come out again, annually or, or, or every couple of years, um, we, we uh, treat those as monographs. Um, and the searching is a big issue for us. Um, <laughs> with a serial record, one of the problems is that the, um, the date in the, in the record, the date in the fixed fields of the record and what appears as a, as a date um, for a serial record might be like 1923, even though your oldest volume of that might be, you know, 2022. Um, so that makes it very difficult when you want to uh, get a folders Florida or whatever, but you want to limit it to things, travel guides that are published, um, you know, after, in the last couple of years. And the same with the college guides and the marketplace guides and stuff. We, we want those individual dates as well as the cover and the, um, the uh, actual title of it, since they tend to um, float around to Peterson's Guide to Colleges in New England and New York, or they, they change those. Um, however, just like um, CW Mars, and for the same reason, those best of catalog uh, collections, those best plays, short stories of the year or, or, or of the 1930s, a decade, those kinds of things. We always do those as monographs, again, because we want the um, individual edit, editor credits, those best short stories of the years. The, the editor is often a very prominent author of that time period and, you know, their introduction and stuff is, is and their, 
the, their role as curator is is significant and those contents notes. Um, so those are always uh, treated as as monographs. And next. Um, so this is our photos. So this is uh, photos essential Great Britain. Um, and these are three different editions. They each have their own edition um, because they were published in 2023, 2021, 2018. And if I looked at some of the travel guides in, in our collection, some of them are way older than that. Um, just using recent history, a travel guide from before 2020 is probably obsolete. Um, so many things changed over the last few years and so many businesses went out of business and prices and, and all of that changed. So, so uh, you know, we really wanna make it easy for people to find the current um, edition of those. And next, um, just a few word about, words about monograph series. Um, you know, we we know what a series is. It's a it's a it's a group of monographs that come out. Often these are fiction, not always. Um, often it's a continuing story. It's at least a um, another adventure of the same characters or, or so on. Um, so the monograph series that are created by authors. Um, are, are things like A Song of Ice and Fire, Three Pine Series, Magic Tree House, and, and so on. Um, we always, <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I, I uh, always get positive response anytime I use Inspector Gamache as uh, an example. Um, the, uh, um, uh, everybody treats these uh, the same way the book gets a, a full monograph treatment and then they're linked together by, uh, by series entries. Um, you'll notice that the Inspector Gamache here is, is uh, the Three Pines series. If you go to the next slide. Ooh, okay, oh, all right, I'm sorry, this is the record. Uh, and this calls it Three Pines Mystery. And if you go to the next slide, uh, now we're a novelist, which we uh, have in our staff catalog and in our public catalog, and they use the, the terminology Inspector Gamache or, or Amans Gamache. Um, so sometimes there's uh, not enough authority control of series titles and, and those kinds of things. Um, we love having the, in our novelist in the catalog, Novelist Select, um, the most popular by far in terms of statistics is is the uh, series entries that make it easy for you to see them in order and and jump from record to to record. And next, um, monograph series are also done by publishers. So a publisher may um, publish a new book as an entry in a particular series, or they may publish a previous an edition of a previous published uh, book and um, give it their own publisher series. So the New York Review book of book cl books classics, the book crush rediscovery and the emerging issues in public health and Oxford's world classics. Just, just one thing that makes these a little different is with the author series, whether the book comes out in hardcover or paperback or audio book or whatever, it's still number three in the whatever series. Uh, but these monograph series are only relevant to the, the edition that, that, that was published this way. Um, so just because Oxford Word World Classics includes great expectations doesn't mean that the series entry on every um, edition of great expectations. And next. Um, this is a, an example of a publisher series. This is Screen Classics um, uh, from the University of, of uh, Kentucky Press. Um, it's books about um, people in the film industry um, who had some affiliation with, with Kentucky. Um, Screen Classics, though, as you might imagine, is a series titled used by you know dvd and other kind, kinds of things and and so it's getting the lexington kentucky as part of the series entry to distinguish it from all of the other series that might be named screen classics and next then things get complicated the series are okay the serials are, are okay but um with things like manga it's uh, life has gotten 
much more complicated and other comics and other um, more complex um, ways of, of uh, publishing um, uh, things. So manga and other comic series are best known, uh, you know, for being complex. Um, but uh, the, some of the best known, they're not best known for being complex. They're in, in cataloging, they're best known for being uh, complex, but they're not the only examples. And the complexity comes because traditionally they've been published in installments like comic books, like newspapers coming out on a regular basis or maybe an irregular basis, but you know, so that there may be a time lapse between you know, the September issue and the next issue that comes out. They usually or often have uh, don't have distinctive titles. They're just number three or number four in that series. Um, although sometimes there are titled special issues similar to magazines. So in general, that suggests that they should be on serial records and then with parts in the item records. Um, and this is uh, again from, from Novelist Select and this is My Hero Academia. Um, and they, you see, um, you don't have titles, individual titles prominently on the cover or maybe anywhere. And next. And other things start changing with these. Titles start appearing. So here's one that we didn't see on the previous one. And it, it's, uh, it's number 12, but it also has its own title, the test. So titles start appearing. Um, more distinctive individual covers. Sometimes at the start of a run, the covers all look quite similar, but they may, as artists change and as the series gets more popular, or changes in focus or, or whatever, you may get, get more distinctive individual covers. The writers change, the authors change, the characters changed, and the plot develops so that the summary from the first edition may not match um, the series as a whole anymore. And it certainly doesn't match, you know, what's in number 12 or number 13 or, or whatever. You know, there are series where, where um, you know, in this edition, the characters all go to Mars. And so that should have a summary that talks about going to Mars and a subject heading that talks about going to Mars. And, you know, it, it, as these things, we want to give full cataloging to each individual um, book in the series. Um, and uh, so that's why. Uh, next. Um, oh, yeah, the other, the series within series and the series that are like sub series or spin off series or whatever. So here's my Aero Academia, the Vigilantes editions uh, um, and things. And sometimes these. These come back together, they merge, they split in different ways. They, you know, um, if you drew a, a map of, of uh, how, these, how these have been published, um, plus um, the, 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 they often will do a compendium, you know, volume that includes, you know, books one through six or, or whatever. So um, we don't attempt to put them on serial records at all. And next. So for these, they go on monograph records so that they each have their own um, their own title, their own subject headings, their own summary, their, their cover is, is visible. Um, it's not necessarily easy. You see here that these are done a little bit differently. And I was going to clean them up, but then I decided that would be, you know, just like just the ones that were going to appear here. Uh, but you see that the the volume number is sometimes in different places and, and written out slightly differently and, and all of that. So like, yes, people have to go through a lot of different bid records to find them. Um, but we think that's preferable to going through a lot of parts on a single bid record um, where it's not easy to figure out what the individual title was for this one or that one, and where you don't have the um, you don't have the cover images and you don't have the summary and, and specific um, uh, contents notes. Basically, uh, not contents notes, the uh, subject headings or summary and so on. Basically, we want to tr treat these as respectfully as individual volumes within the, um, you know, within the Inspector Gamache, you know, series, um, because to their own readers, they, you know, they, they certainly are. 
And next. So parts, the only places that we use parts are on um, the, the reference type serials, uh, the yearbooks and those kinds of things where by definition, it's a record that requires, it's a serial record, so it requires parts to make sense. Um, the other place where we use them is when one or more libraries is circulating something that is less than what's described in the bib record. So here's the bib record for the first uh, complete first season of Homeland. And it, it says that there are four uh, video discs. If every library is circulating four video discs, then there are no parts because any of those items match the bib record and any of those items um, is eligible to fill a hold, a title, a title hold. And next. So in this case, Peabody and Winthrop are circulating these um, in, in parts. Um, these are, um, they've decided to split them up Actually, I'm on the second or third page of holdings here. Most libraries didn't. Uh, but as soon as the first library decided to split them up to disks one and two and three and four, um, then we had to have, have parts on these. Um, we do have some series. Uh, this was happened more with the, the, the VHS series. We do have some where there are six parts, six individual discs or 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 uh, or VHS cassettes um, where one library is circulating um, some libraries are circulating the whole set some libraries are circulating disc one and two disc three and four disc four uh, disc five and six and some are circulating one to three and three to four to six we take no uh, responsibility for how libraries um, circulate them they can break them up any way they want they can circulate them as a whole um, but when they add something that is less than um, all four or however many discs there are, then they have to have the parts because um, the uh, parts are all about holds. Um, so since all of these items are not equivalent and all of these items are not eligible to fill a hold uh, in the same way, then they have to get parts. And next. Um, I don't know why that's here, but okay, next. Um, so I said it's all about holds. So when a patron goes to place a hold on that, because of the existence of series of, uh, because of the existence of parts, um, the patron is offered three things. They're offered discs one and two and discs three and four because we had a few libraries who had something that was called discs one and two or discs three and four. Now that leaves um, the issue of representing the ones that don't have any of those. And we looked on with interest, not happiness, but interest in the recent debate about what that should be called and should that be called any part. Um, we call them complete set because that is what it is. It's it's not it's not any part. It's it's um, it's it's something that matches the the four discs. Um, that that may be lost on patrons. What that means, for, and uh, it, you know, for an average patron, they may. Um, the, without looking back at the bib record, they don't necessarily calculate that there are more copies that are complete sets than, you know, than copies that are, you know, discs one or two um, or, or any of that. Um, but they can uh, choose from among this. Maybe people prefer to get the complete set because then they don't have to think about it. They've got the whole thing. Um, maybe if you had already watched the first two discs, uh, you might just ask for discs three and four here. Um, I, I really feel that there needs to be maybe some check boxes so you can check any that, that you would want um, or, or some other way of doing it, but that is, is uh, how we're doing it. Um, we do have cleanup with, with things that get parts. Um, 
maybe maybe less because we don't use parts as extensively as as CWMRs, and we also don't have anything like the the number of libraries and 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 items and and so on. But but uh, um, that is how we do it, and I think that's the end of me. Yes. Any questions for either of us? I will say that one thing that we do for things like travel guides, uh, when there is a new uh, edition that comes out and you know libraries will still request the record for it, even though they should be using the series record, serial record, um, we add the most recent uh, ISBN to the records. I think that did stop for a while, but uh, uh, we will add it as the 020 and suppress it. So in subfield Z instead of subfield A and uh, with the qualifier saying what edition it is and what year. So for example, if I loaded just, you know, the travel guide for Toronto, uh, for 2024, I would put the ISBN for the 2024 edition into that and with the qualifier saying it's, you know, 2024 and you know, fifth edition or whatever it is. Uh, there's a question here about when adding the DVD. Whoops. <laughs> I didn't read it fast enough here. No. It <laughs> When adding the uh, yeah. DVDs, for example, where do you indicate the parts? Is it in holdings editor? So they can be either created in the monograph parts tab, but I think most of our libraries are adding them in the holdings editor when they're creating their items. And so quite a few of them, if they think to add their parts when they should be, uh, they probably just start typing it in because there is that option rather than you know looking at the drop down menu just to see oh hey is there a part that exists already and and in their defense it's so parts appear in the top part of the screen with the barcode with the all the the, the call number the you know the the uh, prefix and suffix which in in our consortia is all totally them and the way they want to set it up and so it really looks like your prefix your suffix your part and but that's not at all how it actually works yes So that's when we go into our monograph parts tab and start editing or merging or deleting when there are parts on monograph records that should not be there. I'll tell you one thing that I love, and that is weeding. And the reason I love weeding <laughs> is that it it causes many records that I probably should be updating for one reason or another to disappear from the from the database. And uh, uh, we when we're doing some cleanup, I, I still have some old travel guides and stuff that that are old editions that were on a serial record from, you know, from whatever. Um, anytime I want people to move things or I'm planning to move or clean up things, um, I, I love sending a list to the library saying like, I'm, you know, these have, you know, this problem about them and I can fix them, but can you just confirm these actually exist, that these are actually on the shelf? Um, and they often aren't. And so, my work was done by identifying and sending out the message to them with the, with those things. And, you know, I, I, I don't mind, well, I do mind, but <laughs> cleaning up and merging and removing and standardizing and all of that kind of stuff is, is, uh, is great, but not if it turns out that the things are gone already and that you've, you know, just merged in a bunch of things that, um, are not on the shelf, have not circulated, don't have an inventory date or otherwise so old you you can't believe somebody is still keeping it. I see, we don't use parts and encourage our library staff to suppress the parts in the holdings editor preferences. Well, I mean, that wouldn't work for our consortium. If nothing else, you know, there are serial, all the magazines that come in 
the choir parts. And, uh, patrons can request the issue that they want if they're placing a hold on it. I do think there are probably but, some you know, systems in some consortia where um, they, their, their policies but, may um, say, for example, that you, um, you know, that you have to circulate a whole DVD set in this way, we're all going to circulate them uh, the same way. Are there any other questions? Are there any in the uh, feed loop? I'm not seeing any in feed loop. I've been watching as we go. So wouldn't we need parts if you didn't do resource sharing? Well, and again, <laughs> that works for some and doesn't work for others. There's, you know, we're all so different, <laughs> but, which but is actually, interesting. But actually, when we're trying to train people or help people understand um, parts, we always start with the fact that parts are all about, mostly, are about holds. Yeah. Um, you know, that, that, uh, that they have an effect on how holds are placed and that, you know, that, that uh, to, to think of them that way, it's not anything like a suffix or, or a similar piece of, of data that's just information. Mm -hmm. And I think when placing holds, John can probably correct me if I'm wrong, I don't have it open right now, that we have a drop down menu for patrons placing holds. So it's not records, uh, record or radio buttons. Yeah. And so if it's just blank, then people just assume, oh, well, they don't pay attention to it. Yeah. You and need, you need a piece of terminology a there, but it's part it, they don't want. Yeah. And I know we're running out of time, but didn't we recently, wasn't there a change where you can call that complete set something else? Um, yes, maybe in the release that we haven't loaded, but we have retained our complete set and we'll one way or another continue to call it that because mm -hmm. we can't call it any part. Oh, it's not that. It's, um, hmm, what's that default language? I can't believe I've forgotten it, that when patrons are placing holds. Any, uh, any disc, any, says, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's any the, part, the that's launch it, thank pad. You. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Any part, you can now change what that says instead yeah. of any part. Yeah, so John says, yes, we have a drop down that appears only when parts are on the record. I believe that's stock evergreen. Yes. Right. All right, I'm going to stop sharing.